Let's bring in our heavy hitters, Michael Kroger, Stephen Conroy. Gentlemen, great to see you both. Michael, if Matthew Guy needed something to work with, he certainly got that here, hasn't he, with this, this drama? He certainly has. Uh, look, Andrews is going for you know 12-year term, uh, effectively the same as Scott Morrison. He's only going for a third term instead of a fourth because they're four-year terms here. But and he's still in front of the polls. But this is the type of thing, you know, you hate late in a campaign, early in a couple of months from election, where the education minister basically is saying, well, there's nothing you do about the health system. You've got to roll with the punches, you know. It's a terrible look, a terrible thing to say. And it basically sends a strong message to the community, well, we really can't control anything in the health system in Victoria. It's just a, it's a bit of a mess, roll with the punches. So it's a very bad yeah. message to have sent. And obviously, Andrews and the health minister herself are trying to clean it up here. Yeah, there's a fair bit of cleaning up to do, isn't there, Stephen Conroy? Look, I, I'm sure that uh, the Premier has had some very harsh words behind the scenes with Natalie Hutchins. Uh, this is an unwelcome uh, intervention. It was thoughtless, and I, I'm sure he's made all those points to her uh, because the single biggest issue that will dominate the Victorian election campaign is the state of the health system. Every single state around the country has had two years of crisis management because of the pandemic. People are overworked. We've not been able to get the staff available. There's just been all of these things. It's not any one state's fault, uh, but the people in Victoria are making it very clear in any poll you take, in any you know, walk down the street, people will talk to you about the health system. So having uh, statements like that, I'm sure it drove the Premier absolutely crazy. And as you saw there, he is prepared to make the phone call himself uh, or get his health minister to make the phone call. It was just, you know, careless. And he would have given Natalie Hutchins an absolute private flogging. Yeah, and Stephen, <laughs> on to another story now and my interview with Monique Ryan, Dr Ryan, on the program earlier. She's calling for a COVID summit. I also played to her a video that uh, Sky News has obtained and it's of her dancing at the Hawthorne Community Chest Trivia Night on August 19. It was August 1 where she chastised Coalition MPs for not wearing a mask. In this video, she, she's seen dancing in close quarters with, with other lots of other people, but no masks. So I asked her about that. Is that uh, a bit of inconsistency on show? On August 1st, you did chastise some of your parliamentary colleagues. Let's refresh. Put your masks on from repeated infection. Can you explain your, your thinking at the moment, at that moment? Those people to see parliamentarians in their workplace not socially isolating and not even showing each other the respect of wearing masks was deeply upsetting and I, I felt it was insulting to people who've worked in healthcare for the last two and a half years. So I think all of us owe each other the duty to try and not infect each other with things like COVID. Sky News has been sent a video of you at a local event in Hawthorne. I just want to show it to you, dancing in, in cl close quarters with others at the Hawthorne Community Chest Trivia Night. Uh, look, as I said, Karen, I don't always wear a mask. I don't wear a mask if I'm eating or drinking. Uh, if I... <laughs> I didn't know you had that video. I don't eat, drink sleep and wash in, in a mask but I do wear a mask where I'm, sure. I'm worried about keeping the people that I work with safe. Stephen Conroy your thoughts? Well look this is what we call in politics a rookie error one of the things you very quickly learn in politics and I suspect uh, Ms Ryan's just learned it is if you're going to preach if you're going to give lectures if you're going to say you're better than everybody else you better walk the talk uh, and she uh, she clearly was not walking the talk uh, and uh, she, I think, will learn from that and, and the other Teals who are new to Parliament and all the other new members of Parliament will all learn from this, that if you want to you know, lecture people about how they should behave, you've got to make sure that you are living the lecture. Michael Kroger? Well, I think Stephen got it exactly right. Um, you know, if you, if you lecture people about... Uh, very high standards, you've got to apply them to yourself. So she doesn't wear a mask when she's eating or drinking, but what about dancing? She didn't seem to answer that comment, uh, that uh, question, Kieran. No, this is just shameless hypocrisy by Ryan. And quite frankly, mate, I look back and I think to myself, the people of Kuyong swapped Josh Frydenberg for Monique Ryan. Uh, that is gobsmacking. That is gobsmacking. A, a, a hypocrite and an amateur. 
uh, as she is, against a truly outstanding member of parliament in Frydenburg. And so, Richo says the mob always get it right. Um, occasionally they might get it wrong, and that was clearly a case where they got it wrong, mate. Let's look at the, uh, the broader reaction to the death of the Queen last week. And I'm particularly, I'm interested in both of your read on, on the Prime Minister's response. Uh, Stephen Conroy, has, has he got his, his response, the, the mood right? Yeah, I think that uh, Albo's absolutely captured the mood of the country, uh, the affection that the country has for uh, the now former Queen. Uh, and I think that uh, he's uh, pretty much... Uh, got each step along the way right. And, you know, we've still got a few more days uh, before the funeral. Uh, but I, I really think that uh, Albo has shown the respect that's deserved. He's treated the office and the relationship well. And he's not sought to be in any way uh, part of an ongoing debate around the Republic. Uh, a few people on both sides of that debate have tried to, to buy into it. You know, questions about who's going to be on the back of a $5 note. Can we just all, you know, calm the farm? You know, let's, let's talk about these things after we've gone through the funeral. People want to go back to the normal debates. That's great. I, I'm a Republican. I'm a proud Republican. I want to see a Republic. But uh, we can wait a few days. We don't need to, uh, to buy into that. Now, I think, has been dealing with that very well. Yeah. And Michael Kroger, your thoughts? And I guess as well, the poll recently, the Roy Morgan poll that had 60% in favour of the constitutional monarchy arrangements right now. Maybe maybe Australians want to give Charles III a go? Yeah, I think they do, to be fair. Um, it's, uh, you know, uh, you'd expect it to be that high right at the minute. I doubt it'll be that high in a year. But I think... Um, uh, you know, majority of Australians do want to give him a go. Um, they, they, you know, run the risk of, of, of running the country, of having the country led um, in a titular sense by Queen Elizabeth, now King Charles, or by Malcolm Turnbull and Peter Fitzsimons. I mean, that's basically what you're, what you're looking for here if there's a change. Um, so I'm not sure that any time in the next couple of years the country will be in a mood to change. Um, the British have done this, uh, the, the commemoration in relation to the celebration of her life, the commemoration of her period as Queen, I've never seen anything like it in my life. An absolutely stunning tour de force of organisation, of grandeur to, you know, measure, to, to, to equal the contribution she made. It's been a stunning performance by the British. Uh, but finally, I'd say, yeah, I agree with Stephen. I think Albo hasn't put a foot wrong and all credit to him. It must be hard for him. Um, he's a Republican, as we know, but I think he's acted in a very appropriate manner. And, uh, you know, I, I give him, um, you know, top marks for that. Yeah, and this is the thing, Stephen Conroy, if we go back to where we were a couple of months ago, um, it's not that long ago, was it, when we were talking in the lead-up to the election, he had a few stumbles and difficulties, but I think we've canvassed this before, but it's the beauty of... Uh, Low expectations in politics, isn't it? <laughs> well, look, yeah, he, he did have those early stumbles and I thought he, he campaigned well after that Easter natural break that there was in the campaign, which was a godsend for him. And I thought he got focused and, uh, and really into stride. And then from day one, I think we've talked before, Kieran, you know, you get lucky sometimes in politics. You know, first day, Governor-General sworn in on the plane to Japan, uh, meet the President of the US, uh, Prime Minister of India, Prime Minister of Japan... Yeah, the message went out right then and there. There is a new government in town. And, you know, he hasn't put a foot wrong in all of those things. And that overwhelming sense of relief, and I'm, I know Michael won't want to admit this, but, you know, there's, there's relief that there are adults running the place again and not Scott Morrison. Yeah, no, I don't think Michael will agree with that <laughs> final point. <laughs> but, but Stephen Conroy, I'm um, sorry, Michael Kroger, when you look at the, uh, the situation of... Uh, previous Prime Ministers that have come in with huge stratospheric expectations, like I think back to Turnbull and, and Rudd, um, internationally you maybe th would say uh, Obama, the, these stratospheric expectations, they're never met. Coming mm. in with low expectations can be a bit of bit of magic dust for a politician. Yeah, 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 absolutely fascinating point. I mean, I've always been in Parliament for a long time. The Labor Party picked Gillard in front of him. They picked Rudd in front of him. Green and Beasley were. Latham were all leaders. Whilst he was in the parliament, he was much younger then, of course. 
it took a long time for the Labor Party to pick Albo. He certainly wasn't their first choice. And I think Albo's thinking to himself, I can't believe I'm here, uh, but I am here. Uh, and there's a lot of politics and luck, and the, and, and the roulette wheel of political life is the, his ball has landed on his number, the ball's landed on his number. But I think Albert's decided I'm not going to be like Whitlam. I'm going to be calm and measured. I'm not going to go out like a bull at a gate like Rudd and promise all of these things. I'm not going to have a, you know, grand policy gestures which are going to scare all the horses. I've got my, I've got my agenda. I'm happy with my agenda. It's quite a big agenda, but he's moving slowly and cautiously. You can see in his demeanour and his presentation, it's very measured, very balanced. It's very calm, calm, you know, calm, troubled waters. And that's working for him. And the caution is that, that Albo is displaying is working for him. And it's a big, big contrast to Rudd and Whitlam in particular, and Turnbull in particular. Michael Kroger, Stephen Conroy, gentlemen, great to see you both. Catch you soon. Thanks, mate.